Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to dive into the IBM cost spec and our implementation in Hot Chocolate. So with Hot Chocolate 14, we have put a lot of emphasis on productivity, making you productive with complex patterns in GraphQL and really putting you up for the pit of success. And this is also true with the new security features that we put into Hot Chocolate, the IBM cost spec for instance, and that are on by default. With a lot of GraphQL servers, the developers behind put a lot of effort in developer experience and we were the same. We did also put a lot of emphasis in developer experience and that meant the GraphQL server was configured in an unsecure way. Not that GraphQL is unsecure by default, it's just we didn't set it up with persisted queries by default or for instance cost specification. That means if you just put out your GraphQL server, then it was probably not secure. So what does not mean secure here? It means that you could formulate a very large requests and that could overwhelm your server. And that's where the IBM cost specification comes in. And that actually grades your GraphQL requests and gives them a score, gives them actually two scores. And we're going to have a look at why two scores and what they mean. And by doing so, we'll deny requests that have a too high weight on your server, too high complexity or too high cost. And uh, this will secure your server quite nicely. So while the best security that you could put in a GraphQL server is still persisted queries, it's what Twitter uses or what Facebook uses or what not. We recognize that this is uh, more setup that you have to do. And uh, we're going to also simplify this setup uh, with the 14 release. I'm going to show you that in a different episode. But for a lot of people using complexity is a good alternative with which you can just start. And you have basically the developer experience as before just that we guide you to better practices. Before we get started, I have a new course on dorm train, getting started with GraphQL in .NET. This is not the typical getting started course that you find everywhere else. With over seven and a half hours of content, it teaches what GraphQL is, but also dives deep into patterns and best practices, schema design and schema evolution. The first 300 of you who are getting this course will get a 20% discount with the code STYPE20. If you want to dive even deeper, you can join one of our online workshops where the Core Chili Cream team teaches you everything we know about GraphQL from backend to frontend. And because I'm launching a new course on Dome Train, I'm chipping in a 30% discount on all of our online workshops. Check out our online workshops on learn.chilicream.com. All the links and information you can find below the video in the description. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So the IBM cost specification, and you can see that here has a couple of goals, what they want to achieve. And uh, that is mainly that the server should express cost or what is costly in the server in a, standard in a standardized way. And uh, this allows also clients to inspect what cost means or what is expensive in the server. And you also can guide with that kind of your front end developers to not overwhelm your server with costly queries. You can implement that in various ways. What we implemented for the first iteration is now the static analysis. And that is very good to fend off requests in the beginning by estimating the maximums of uh, your query that could happen. This is also very good in the combination with rate limiting and allows you to apply to your users a certain cost budget. Having this set, this sounds very complex because it means you have to grade everything by hand and provide cost everywhere. But that is not the case. As I said, in Hot Chocolate, we always think about developer experience and we also think about security a lot in this case because letting you grade everything manually will leave a lot of holes. So we do a lot of assumptions with Hot Chocolate 14 and grade a lot of things automatically. Let me show you that actually. I exported here our schema, the schema for this GraphQL server here. And you can see that we have a lot of cost already here on the types. And this is not me putting specific cost on fields. This is a GraphQL server or Hot Chocolate actually grading these things. 
For instance, this is a filter input, a filter input, or this is actually a sorting input. That is if you're using the hot chocolate data integration, uh, and that allows you to filter by arbitrary fields here. And each of these sorting operators has a cost of 10, for instance. This is also true for filtering. You can see here's a filter cost, for instance, or let's actually look for the string operation filter. If I go into that, you can see that uh, contains, for instance, has a higher cost than equals, which is true for most databases. Since we are doing that in a database independent way, we are also grading uh, this roughly. But this gives you good defaults that will let you sleep better from the get-go. What we also do is look at other things like async fields. Async fields is where you probably fetch data. We give that also different cost. Let's, for instance, go here to the query type. And then you can see that the query type here has cost of the root resolvers because they are all async. Here we, for instance, have the products uh, field. So I quickly reformatted that so you can better read it. Uh, we have here a couple of things. This is a standard paging field where you can see we have here the slicing fields. That is how much data we want to get. And you can see that annotated here. We have this list size attribute from the cost spec where we have the assumed size. That is the max paging size that is allowed. So we assume here a size of 50. And then we have here the slicing arguments, a first and last. So depending on if this is provided or not, we will actually assume different sizes, right? And then we have here the sized fields. So what do these fields slice? They slice actually in the child type, these fields here. And then on top of the list size expectations that we have here specified automatically, we also have here a cost of 10 that is for async fields. These are all assumptions that we put into the schema. There are more. I showed you already filtering, sorting, and there are other aspects we're gonna put weight on. So let's actually look at the implementation of this server. And if I go into here, I say we put this in by default and there's actually no add cost specification because by default, we're gonna put that into your server. So if you just start it, you will have now the cost analyzer in there and that will, with good defaults, size your requests. You can opt out of this by saying disable cost analyzer, but then your GraphQL server is just not protected. It makes sense to opt out if you use something like persisted queries, but even with persisted queries, this is a good thing because we can statically analyze your queries the time you export them. And then when you import them, we already have the cost and we don't calculate it in the server because we already estimated the cost for these queries. And that means we can use the cost also with open telemetry by putting the cost into metrics and that uh, no matter what tool you are using will give you deep insights in what the pressure is actually to your system. With that said, let's actually run the server. I already started it here. So we go to Banana Cake Pop, which is here, and we open a new document, and then we just craft a new query. I'm saying here, get brands. So we go here for the brands type, and I'm let's start simple. We just go and get the ID and name here and then we run it and then it actually fails. And that is the first expectation that I had because like we put in good defaults now and that means we're gonna force the consumer of the API to actually specify how much data they want. In this case, we can specify here a thousand and that would fail, right? Because a thousand items would actually have too much cost. And that's where the cost specification comes in, it grades it. It will reject this query because we cannot provide that. We could also just ask for 50. That is actually the maximum that we would allow in execution. And then we can run that and then we would get data. This is good. So we can also now ask for the cost because this query is valid, but we actually have no idea of the cost. So what we can do is ask for GraphQL cost and say we want to report the cost with each request we send in. This is the header. We can just send it and then you get down here the operation cost. We have a field cost of 11 and a type cost of 52. So what does that mean and how does this actually add up? So let's start with the field cost. So what we have seen is that these root fields are async fields that actually fetch data. 
they have a default cost of 10. So this field costs 10. Then we have, then we actually have here composite type. So a composite type, according to the IBM cost spec, has a default cost of one, even if it's not async. So we annotate here one. Within the nodes field, this is actually the sized fields. We would have 50 objects, right? But in this case, it only consists of scalar fields and scalar fields have no cost. So we have a cost of zero here. So what the field cost represents is actually the execution impact. So how much does it cost to execute this query? And in this case, the execution impact is 11. It's low because we are asking here for 50, that's all right. And the impact to get that is 10. And then we have here a single field for nodes. So this object that we have actually here, but we also have this second number and that is the data impact. So we have here type cost and that is 52 because we have 52 objects that are instantiated in our execution. And that means we have here the query type, that is one. We have the connection type here, and then we have 50 of these nodes. So if we run that, you can actually count, it's not 50 items, but this is a static analysis. So it goes for the upper bounds. We don't know that you just have 10 in your database. If you allow a user to query for 50, this is potentially what you could ask the server for. And we assume that this is what you will get. And this makes sure that you don't overwhelm this server, even if you don't have as much data in there. Ask for what you actually need and you get better performance on your backend. Okay, let's actually ask for a bit more data here because we wanna also have the products. And the products, again, is a paging field here. So we're gonna dive into that. We're actually gonna go and get the name just of the products and uh, we're gonna also go here for 50. So if we run that, we actually violate here the type cost because now we have 50 times 50. That is the multiplier that you have here. So all the costs I have here is times 50. So we have these things, but now we have here an async field, which costs 10. And then we again have here a cost of one. Here we get the cost of zero, but this time this is multiplied, right? This is 50. This is 50 times 10, which is also already 500, right? And you can see here we have 561. I could sum it up and then we would uh, be at the 561 but it has actually 2,600 possible objects that would be instantiated. And this is actually the object that you have here. The, the connection type would be, we would have 50 times the nodes here. So you can see that this adds up. It really gives you an idea of how much the server aggregates there in data. So better would be to just ask here for 10, and then we would already be in the bounds and we would get data here again. These are upper bounds, so the server will always assume the upper bounds here. But what if I just ask for variables here? For instance, I could ask here for the first to be specified as a variable. If I specify it like this, we would again get upper bounds because we don't know what you will pass into this variable. This is static analysis. The variables are coerced at runtime, so we don't care about the variables. We just grade always the request and we look at the maximum that you would get here, and that could be 50. So a good idea is to have the slicing fields here specified as literals. They should anyway not change so much, though most of the times you don't have them sized, or think about other ways to specify that. It's a good practice to actually have variables in an operation because then it can be compiled in the server, and we don't have to track multiple queries that are essentially the same, but just with different literals in there. So use variables, but you could for, for instance here, the paging sizes, you could use constants. You could also decide to raise the bounds that works here in the options. So we're gonna modify here the cost options. And there you could, for instance, define the max field cost or the max type cost. The second thing here is even if we get rid of this guy here, that you can put a lot of properties in here. So I can ask for a lot of data for product, right? And it wouldn't impact me so much because like I'm not paying for scalar fields. Actually, I'm not paying for all leaf fields. So I can put a lot of leaf fields in here 
and it would be still a pretty low cost. You can see 121. One thing where you get a big penalty on is if you really do not prudent settings, and I see that a lot, like you could have a paging setting here that uh, has, for instance, a max page size of in max. This is the worst setting you could ever put in a GraphQL server. I could take this GraphQL server now down pretty quickly. You can attack a GraphQL server with this setting very, very quickly. So never do something like that. And with the cost specification, we explicitly give you a penalty for that. So if I go in here and let's put in the variable again and we rerun that, then you get now a huge cost because that's the cost that you could cause on this server, right? I could get this many objects if they are in the database. And it doesn't matter if you're now saying I'm just having 100,000 entries in your database. That is insane for a GraphQL server to accumulate because a GraphQL server would always in memory aggregate the data set because in GraphQL we have something called non-null propagation and that is actually meant to deliver partial data. But because of this reason, the data set is actually in memory and we cannot just stream it out. So having in max there, it would even be, <laughs> be very bad on a REST API, right? Doesn't matter where you do that. It's actually bad. You don't need paging anymore, right? Don't do that. Go for lower paging bounds. It could be 100. GitHub, for instance, has 100. You can get 100 items, which is the same number. But then the cost specification will save you from actually having these in multiple layers nested or having a lot of data here. So what do you think? This is just the first tidbits I show you with the cost specification. There are a couple of other videos I'm gonna do on that. Uh, one will show you how to combine this with rate limiting. That's actually what GitHub is doing and giving your users a budget of costs that it can incur on your backend. So try it out. The defaults for everything are not yet fixed. We're gonna try that also out in production and we collect a lot of telemetry data from our backends. And we're gonna feed that in over the next previews to get much better at the defaults because the idea that we have is that you just start your GraphQL server and it runs with the defaults and you get a good experience that secures your server. And if you're not happy with these defaults, you can always override them. And let me quickly show you this last thing. So if I wanted to put a higher cost on my field, I could just override it. I go to the types. I go, for instance, here to the queries. And I just put the cost on here and then I can specify the weight and I could uh, put whatever number I want to have in here. And then I have the weight specified for my field here. So as I said, try it out and give us feedback and sound out in the comments. If you like our project, please help us by starring us on GitHub. And with this, I'm out.